Hey guys, how's everything going today? Uh, today I'm just gonna do a simple little video on something that I think every new Glock owner should know how to do, and that is a detailed strip of your Glock pistol. Um, this right here is a Gen 4 that I have. It looks, and it is heavily customized. Most of the stuff that's done on it though is done by me. Um, there's really no aftermarket internals inside of it, so you don't really have to worry too badly about the parts not matching your parts. It's the same exact stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, when you are doing anything with firearms, you want to make sure the gun is clear. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to simply take out the mag, rack the slide back, check inside, also feel, visual check, rack it a few times just to be sure, and we can go ahead and dry fire it in a safe direction. Okay guys, so now this gun is clear, we can actually start to disassemble it. So the way that we are going to disassemble this gun is quite simple. Um, the first step is doing something called a Glock Armor's Hold. Um, it is where you're going to put your webbing of your thumb back behind the pistol like this, grab over with these three fingers, and push until you hear that click. I'll let you listen to that sound one more time. Okay guys, one thing to remember, we're not pulling back far enough to engage the trigger to, um, to cock it like this. We don't want to go that far. No, we don't. We only want to go maybe that far. And that's it. Okay? So once you get it back right here, you're going to take this other hand, and on these plungers that are on both sides, you're going to pull them both down at the same time. And then you're going to let go. What this is going to do is it's going to release your slide as you just saw, okay? So now your gun's going to be in two parts. Okay. Going on, to do a basic field strip, which we're not going to stop at, but this will show you basically what a field strip would be, uh, basically. You would remove your spring by pushing in, and it'll pop right out. Then, after that, you can take your barrel by pushing up and also out. This gun is now field stripped. Um, a lot of people will clean their guns just in field strip. For me, since I'm very proficient and very fast at taking it all the way apart, when I clean it, I also just go ahead and take everything out and clean it all. Even though it really doesn't need that because it is a Glock, I just feel better about it. Okay guys, so from now on, we're gonna keep going and this is going to be basically the detail strip or the armor strip, whatever you wanna call it, of the rest of this Glock pistol. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with the slide. So we'll go ahead and put this off to the side for just a minute. Okay, so to start um, with the slide, there's one thing you have to do and make sure it is. Um, this plunger right here, um, if you push it down, you can move this silver piece, which is part of your firing pin, back and forth. Okay, Just push this down and move that firing pin back. It will just help with this next step. Okay, so the next thing is, and I hope you guys can see it fairly well, there is a black little tab right here um, that can move back and forth. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get a punch like this, which is just a Glock's armor punch. I mean, very cheap. My Glock actually came with one. Uh, hopefully you guys as well, as well. But no, so you're just going to pull back at this, and then as you do that, you're going to push up on this red, or in my, in my case, it's red, uh, slide cover, okay? So I'm going to hurry and put the gun's nozzle face down to do that, but that is what I am doing. Now, when you do this, be sure to keep your thumb over the part where you took your slide cover out of, because there are some spring-retained things there. So just be sure that you have your thumb over it or else you'll have something maybe flying across the room on you. And you don't want that. Okay, so next what we can do is we can take out these two pieces. We have our firing pin right here. And then we also have our ejector, spring, and rod right here. So after we have those two pieces out, the rest of it's fairly simple to complete the slide. Um, from here, all you're going to do is take your thumb or the punch, if you feel like you need it, and push down on this plunger again. As you do this, this little black piece, the ejector, can be 
taken out. After that, the plunger will come free and you can just lift it right up out of the slide. This slide is now totally bare of all parts besides a couple of things that most people do not generally ever take out of the slide. One thing is that there is actually a little channel inside here in the firing pin channel that is polymer. Um, some people don't even know about it and they will go ahead and bake uh, gun parts with it in there and accidentally ruin their gun by screwing up that little channel. The other part so that people generally do not take out on a basic field strip or a detail strip I mean are these sights. Um, I mean there's just no need to. I never have a need to. The only time you really would is if you're painting the gun or doing something of that nature. Anyway, so this is now totally disassembled so we'll place it aside. Going on, we'll talk more about how to disassemble this firing pin. Um, this is very important. I think that everybody should actually learn how to disassemble the firing pin just to clean it every now and then because this part does get very dirty quite often. So we're going to need the slide as a tool basically to help you disassemble this. It's just a little trick. Uh, most people know um, when you are disassembling your actual firing pin. So the trick is you put this barrel side down. You're going to take this, your firing pin. You're going to place it backwards into the little firing pin hole and have the little silver spike right here rest on the side of the slide so it doesn't go down in. This is going to help you to get your cuffs off, okay? So now what we're going to do is you're going to, uh, you're going to simply push down on this spring right here until it loosens enough to make these cups like loosen, okay? I'm not gonna do it like this because I don't wanna accidentally lose the cups. They're very small pieces, but what you're essentially going to do, push down on the spring and then remove the cups one at a time. That's the cup. Now, those are very small pieces, so be very careful about not losing them. Next thing that will come off is your firing pin spring. This part is very much related to how heavy your trigger pull is. Uh, in fact, it's probably the most drastic thing that will change it the most. So if you're looking at different triggers or different trigger kits, before you do that, change out just your, your firing pin spring and see if you like the trigger better just by doing that and not spending your money on a $150 kit when you can go and buy a $20 spring set and possibly get something like a three pound or a four pound um, firing pin spring in it. It might save you some money. Okay, so now it's left us with this, the two parts. Um, I'm gonna set this aside now we're done with it. Uh, you just basically push it through the opposite end. It's gonna give you your black cover you can put this with the rest of it, and your actual firing pin itself. Okay, so now that we have that totally disassembled, let's go on to disassembling the frame. Okay, so when you're disassembling the frame, the first things that we're going to take out are these three pins. Some people think that you can, well, you can. Some people take out these two pins and lift out the things that you can. With those two pins gone, then remove that pin. But when I'm removing pins, I just remove them all. That's just what I do. Uh, what I suggest is go ahead and get yourself a thing of tape or whatever you have. Maybe you might have a block for it too, a bench block. Um, and just put it like this. For me, since my pins are Cerakoted and I do not like to injure them or hurt the Cerakoting on it, I prefer to get a microfiber towel while I'm doing this to punch out the pins. Um, I just cover it over, but basically just so you guys know, you don't need a hammer for this. The Glock's pins are usually very, very, very loose and not in a bad way. They're just the perfect tolerance. So you don't usually need to get yourself a hammer to get these pins out. So you can just pry them. So I'll just feel for where the pinhole is. Uh, sometimes it can take me a second with this. So I found the first one. Just punch right through with my hand. Like that. And then I can simply come over on the other side, take it out. There's our first pin, littler one. Now we'll go ahead and do the bigger one. Okay, on the bigger one, a tip is that this, uh, your actual slide uh, release or slide lock, whatever you call it, wiggle it as you push on it. Um, this 
will sometimes get jammed up on there and make your job a lot harder. So if you wiggle it, it can help you to get that baby coming out. Okay, um, you just probably saw this is the slide release. It just fell out. Like I said, it's retained by that secondary bigger pin. So now that's came out as well. Let's put it over here. Um, and then the secondary pin, of course, you can also just pry right on out yourself. And we'll put it over here. And the third and last pin is the easiest of the three pins to get out most of the time. So we're going to head and just pry that little baby out as well. Nice and easy, no trouble. And there's our third polymer pin. Okay guys, so now that we are left with a pinless Glock, what we can now do is start to remove parts out of it. The first part you're going to want to remove out of it is the actual slide block, which is this bigger silver piece here. We're gonna simply take a tool, a screwdriver, or this, um, this little tool here, your Glock tool, you can just lift it on out, and it'll just pop out just like that. We'll just set it over here. From here, now you can lift out your whole trigger assembly, very simply, just by grabbing the ejector and um, lifting out. It should just pry out like this, all in one big piece. We'll disassemble that more here in just a minute. Um, now for some guys, um, I don't do this all the time, and I don't see a point to it. This takedown lever here, these little guys, you can actually take these out as well. What you'll see is there's a silver piece that lays right here. All you need to do is simply press this down while you turn this to the side and shake. And now it's coming out a little bit. So all you have to do is just kind of work with it. Just pushing down that silver piece as you work out the actual, there it goes, the actual takedown lever. So now this will just come on out, really easy. Also, if you want to, you can bang the slide a little bit against the tape and usually the silver piece will fall out. Um, sometimes it doesn't like to. Uh, if, you, if you're experiencing that, what I suggest is just taking something, maybe like a small Phillips head screwdriver, if you can. Just reach it in there. Start trying to help it out a little bit. I mean, it's not a huge deal if you can't get it out. Um, and this is just for people who are basically interested in painting their slide, I mean, painting their frame or whatever. We're just not going to take it out for the day, um, but take my word, you can get it out. Um, I, for the sake of the video's length, I don't really feel like doing it. Okay. Um, also, if you want to, you can take out this mag release. If you guys really want to see me take out the mag release, just go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, that can just be a totally separate video because of the length that it would take to actually take it out and put it back in. It's kind of a... It's, it's just a harder process than what it's worth for this video, and especially for most guys. You don't need to take it out, and I mean, the only time you do it is again for painting or upgrade purposes, so maybe in a later video I can show that to you unless you guys are just set on me showing you that. So, this is now totally taken apart, um, besides just this, the small things like the actual mag release and little silver detent or whatever you want to call it for the takedown okay so now what we'll work on is we'll go ahead and, and uh, disassemble our trigger assembly all the way this is very simple um all you have to do is take your trigger bar with the trigger face on it or trigger shoe and you're going to simply kind of push it this way and as you do you're gonna pry it out like this I'll show you one more time. Like that. And you'll see this spring is attached to the whole trigger bar. So what you're going to do is this fish hook, you're going to simply disconnect from this trigger bar. 
which some can, sometimes can be a little bit of a pain. There we go. So now this is your trigger bar and trigger shoe. Uh, you don't want to take off this trigger shoe unless you have a replacement for it due to the fact that that pin right there, if you push it out, um, it's a one-time deal. You push it out, this shoe is ruined, and that only happens, or the only time you really want to take it out is if you do intend on replacing the trigger shoe. Next piece we're going to go ahead and just take out is our actual uh, trigger spring right here. Uh, it's pretty easy, just another little fish hook. A little bit of messing around with it, usually you can get it out. Um, I mean, it's kind of an annoying spot. It's just like the other one. I mean, it's the same. So we'll just go ahead and pry this guy out a little bit. Sometimes uh, some needle nose pliers or some pliers in general can help you to get this little guy off. Uh, let's see if I have some. So these little guys right here, you can just simply take it, grab it sometimes, and it'll help you pry it right out like that, okay? So now we'll just put that back over here as well. Okay, the next part is our trigger bar. Um, pretty simple. I mean, our trigger bar, this is our, I want to say it's our trigger connector, either way. You saw me just do it. You you can literally just take it right on out. It's really easy, usually pretty loose. And this part is just basically your trigger assembly block. Has your ejector on it. Um, and if you're wondering, this looks like it's bent and broken for the 17 9 millimeter models. That is actually correct. This part is just simply your trigger assembly block. If you think this piece is bent or broken, I assure you it isn't. That's just how the ejector is on most models. Okay guys, so once you're here, you are totally disassembled. And that is all the pieces to your Glock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a video also on what all these pieces do and um, exactly what their function is inside the gun, so stay tuned for that. Also, I will have a disassembly, I mean a reassembly video. Um, I just don't want to combine them in the same video because it seems like a lot of information for one video. So, they will be uploaded at the same time, so no need to worry if you're like, oh gosh, I can't get it back together now, because you can. Um, it's gonna be in a playlist with this video, so don't be alarmed. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you want to see some more content about this gun in particular. If you want to see me shooting the gun, if you want to see me doing anything with the gun. If you have any more questions about disassembly, let me know down in the comments section. Um, if you have any tips for other people, that if you are somebody who's been doing this a long time and have some suggestions for other people who might be new with the Glock platform on how to disassemble this, Go ahead and let us know down in the comments section. Um, you guys go ahead and have a nice day. Stay safe. Thanks, guys.